<laughs> and for our last story, I would like to talk uh, a little bit with you. And by talk with, I mean read. It's been a long night, and I switched. <laughs> and oh, these stories are so much better. Um, we're now going to finish with I'm sorry, we're not going to finish till I have the entire room's attention. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> Maximum tankage fire, the Phoenix. Trust me, you'll all want to hear this one. You haven't listened to the other ones. Listen to this. <clears throat> Tank Space Jammer yanked the emergency door release on the captain's private toilet and kicked hard. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is gripping. <laughs> gripping his sonic bowl scrubber in his thickly muscled hand, he leapt out and found himself blinking by bright white light. Sorry, found himself blinded by science. <clears throat> the ground, thank you for those my age. The ground slanted at an angle to the latrine, causing him to lose his footing and fall. He caught himself with his left hand, his fingers digging into the sand. Sand? He blinked against the radiance and pushed himself upright to his knees. Son of a bitch! He knelt in the blue sands of the planet codenamed Sapphire. The twins... Come on, the blue sands of the planet codenamed Sapphire. <laughs> I've lost you already, haven't I? Okay. Grade schoolers got it. <clears throat> The twin suns, one yellow, the other bright orange, blazed overhead, heating up the air to at least 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Twisted metal, plastiform, and other materials that a grunt like him couldn't possibly name lay strewn about him for miles in every direction across the vast, flat blue desert, varying in sizes from small buildings to pieces the size of his fist, some of it still aflame. The entirety of the UGC Phoenix appeared to be represented there. Damn! As his eyes adjusted, he realized that not all around him was inorganic. The corpses of hundreds of his fellow Marines littered the plain, mixed in with the wreckage and laying as still as Centauran pig lizards. They wore a variety of differing military kits, some of them in full body armor of shock troops, others in their battle fatigues, while still others wore only their camouflaged speedos. <laughs> Tank gasped, looking down at his own camouflaged pants and realized that he too could have been among the dead. Fortunately for him, the captain's private bathroom was the most protected place on the ship. Fortunately for him, his inadvertent depancing of the captain during an ambassadorial dinner had gotten him that toilet duty every day for two months. If he had been in his bunk when the attack had come. Turning back towards the nearest of his dead shipmates, he wondered if any had made it to the escape pods, and if so, how many had survived the additional assault that surely came. The cow, K-O-W, always destroyed as many escape vehicles as they could. Soulless bastards. They would also send hit squads to survey the wreckage for any additional survivors to kill or enslave. The heat beat down on his shirtless, well-muscled upper body, reminding him both of how hot he was and of the dangers of skin cancer in such a harsh environment. <laughs> if he was not careful, the intense heat could render him delirious in a matter of hours. He scanned the nearest pieces of debris, searching for a corpse roughly his same size in full battle armor but movement caught his eye before he could find one. His heart raced at the thought of a fellow survivor. Scavenging among the dead, or more likely searching for survivors, one of the damned cows stopped amid some smaller chunk of flotsam and looked directly at him. The beastly humanoid creature raised his bovine head and let out a horrific battle moo. It charged towards him, its hooves digging into the ground its traditional muktatorian power spear held in both hands. Tank's marine reflexes took over. 
He sprinted toward the nearest bodies, a cluster of six or seven of his fallen comrades, most of whom appeared to be in full battle dress, their blasters strapped to their sides, the G-57 assault rifles scattered around them. He glanced over his shoulder at his muscular legs as his muscular... He glanced over his shoulder as his muscular legs propelled him towards the nearest weapons and saw the seven-and-a-half-foot-tall cow had halved the distance between them. As powerful as Tank was, he could never outrun such a foul creature genetically bred for war over centuries and wearing full body armor that molded to its grotesquely muscled body. <laughs> the cow would overtake him for certain and would at the very least beat the hell out of him. Turning at a right angle to his initial path, he darted towards the nearest place, piece of debris, a massive chunk of twisted metal next to a wall of stacked bunks that had fallen to its side. There were no bodies there, but he spied a holstered blaster pistol hanging on what had been the post of the head of the lowermost bed. His heart pounded in his chest as adrenaline coursed through his muscular veins. He drove, he dove, rolled, and came up next to the bed, grabbing the pistol and drawing it in one smooth motion. The cow's ear-shattering moo rent the air asunder, stunning Tank momentarily as his ears rang. He clutched his hands to his head, trying to drown out that hideous sound, and fell sideways. The ragged edge of the bunk tore a small gash in his cheek as he hit the ground. Shaking himself, he pushed off the sand and managed to get his feet just as the cow reached him. The massive creature landed before him, the impact of its large hoofed feet and its hideous mass causing the ground to shake. Die, cow! Tank brought up his blaster. The cow swung his muktatoran with surprising skill and grace, the butt of the weapon impacting the top of Tank's weapon, the top of Tank's weapon hand, sending jarring pain through his fingers. He dropped the pistol, but his training took over. He rolled with the impact, spitting with the blow and kicking backwards into the thing's rock-hard udder, visible through a large <laughs> hole in its armor. Even with Tank's considerable muscle power, the blow barely slowed the creature down. It backhanded him, his clarinomium, metal gloves, and great strength knocked him clear over the prone walls of bunks to the sand beyond and away from his weapon and any other debris. He hit the ground hard, jarring his soldier in a fiery burst of scorching pain, spun around and sprang back to his feet with expert finesse. He tossed the toilet scrubber in his left hand and drew the combat electrified Z-blade from his boot with his right. Digging his heels into the sand, he assumed the Flutoran Banshee stamps and waited. Nostrils flaring, bovine eyes blaring with hatred, the 400-pound cow barreled towards him, spinning its spear in a menacing arc. Tank waited until the Muktatoran's plasma tip ignited as the cow readied itself for a killing blow. Then. As the glowing blue blade sliced dangerously close to his throat, he leapt into action. Dropping to his left knee, he fainted to the right, spun around in a full arc, flopping forward, thumbed the activate switch on the toilet scrubber, flip it onto his back, and thrust upward with both the knife and the scrubber. The toilet brush caught the joint in the cow's armored knee, its vibrations forcing the metal links apart. Tank jammed the knife hard, toggling its electrification power to maximum as he plunged it into the cow's kneecap. Black blood spewed from the injury like a leaking gyrocar cue joint, splattering <laughs> Tank's arm and face, but he barely noticed as the bloodlust of battle took him over. The cow bellowed in pain and dropped to one knee. Tank stood up hard and fast, driving his head into the cow's soft throat. The massive creature gurgled and fell backwards, dropping the muktatoran. Tank jumped for a good three feet into the harsh desert air and then, as if spiking an Orion Uta ball, landed on the cow's chest, bringing both the scrubber and the knife down hard into the thing's neck. He then twisted the knife sideways and ripped the blade out of the side of the cow's neck. Thick obsidian ichor erupted everywhere, befouling the once pristine sands and Tank's clothing. The thing clawed at its throat, desperate to hold its life's juices inside, but slowly its thrashing slowed, and finally its arms dropped to its side, and it remained unmoving. He raised the weapon skyward and roared the cry of the victorious. At long last, the phoenix was, invent was avenged. Impressive, a sultry woman's voice intoned from behind him. 
for a man. <laughs> Tank whirled around, leaping off of the cow to the sand in the direction of the voice. He spied the outline of a tall, humanoid woman standing before him. The twin suns blazing behind her. As his eyes adjusted to the light, her cur curvaceous form came into focus. Wearing a chainmail bikini that did virtually nothing to cover her green skinned, lightly muscled body, she towered over him a good six inches, like some kind of mythological Amazonian goddess. Long, jet black hair billowed behind her in the strong winds as she gripped the cow's muktatoran in her right arm, its butt planted firmly in the blue sands. A long sword hung at her left hip, a blaster of unique design on her right and a crossbow on her back. Tank gasped despite himself at her gorgeous, almond-shaped lavender eyes regarding him. Her full sensuous lips pursed into a smile revealing perfect teeth. <coughs> who, uh, who are you? Tank asked between heaving breaths. He held his hands at his sides but did not loosen his grip on his blood-smeared weapons. As with the sirens of Marcus V, there was no telling what she might want or what dangers she might possess. <coughs> My name is Babora. <laughs> I am princess of the Forgotten Ones, sworn enemy of my mother, Queen Innuenda, chief priestess <laughs> of her false gods, those whom you call the cow. <laughs> she raised the Muktatoran enough to flex her impressive bicep in emphasis. By slaying this beast, you have shown both bravery and common purpose to my cause. I find you intriguing. Her smile broadened, and I am not easily impressed. Great, take relax slightly. Then maybe you can help me look for survivors. There are none that I have seen, Babora motioned to the flaming wreckage with a sweep of her toned left arm. We must get to the passages below before more of the cow arrive. That was but the first. The rest of the herd should not be far behind. <laughs> Whatever you say, babe. <laughs> it is Babora. Babora, she corrected him, her 17-pack of abdominal muscles flexing as she punctuated each sy syllable. Babora. Tank's eyes drifted up from her stomach to her perfect breasts lingering there for a moment before he was able to shift his attention back to her lavender eyes. Her exotic beauty was, and obvious physical power sent chills through his body, centering in his privates. <laughs> he forced himself to ignore the feelings of lust rising within him and turned away, crossing the distance to the fallen blaster. He slipped his knife into his boot, attached the toilet scrubber to his molecular bonding belt, and then retrieved the pistol and its holster, strapping the latter to his right hip and slipping the gun into place there. He turned back. I'm not leaving without at least looking for survivors. These were my friends. His chest ached as the sun beat down on him. He had scarcely noticed it before, but now that the heat of the combat had ended, it was apparent that without this alien's green skin, he would not stand a chance under these hot conditions. You must get out of the open. Your human body is not attuned to the radiation of our twin suns, she insisted, pointing skyward in either a completely accidental or totally blatant attempt to showcase her chest. <laughs> Tell me more about your twin suns. <laughs> he stared at her breasts, transfixed by their alien perfection. They are too much for any man to survive. <laughs> Though many have tried. <laughs> her tone had gone from concern to decidedly playful, despite her obvious danger or perhaps because of it. I am not just any man, I am Tank Space Jammer. Tank pried his gaze from her spheres, looking up to catch her luminous eyes. They glittered with both mirth and danger, sending mixed signals of both desire and wariness. Well, Tank Space Jammer, she cooed, taking a step forward. You are the finest specimen I have ever seen. 
Perhaps you could survive. Oh, I can survive, babe, Bora. He flexed his pecs in emphasis. I can survive anything you, I, I mean, your planet can throw at me. Desire burned through him now, pushing thoughts of the cow, the phoenix, and his dead comrades from his mind. I, her eyes poured into him, filling him with a longing that matched his own. I, I must resist, we must resist. There is too much you do not understand about Sephirians. There's too much danger. No one, human or Sephirian, can resist the tank. <laughs> he stepped closer, deliberately tensing his deltoids in what he knew to be an impressive display that few women could resist. Babora's muscular body shook visibly in response, and her eyes rolled up into her head for an instant. When she looked back at him, they had gone from lavender to bright red. Her smile broadened, and she looked at him much the same way the Zartaran tigers looked at their prey. We shall see. She was on him in two steps, the Muktatoran's glowing blade pressed up nearly against his throat in the blink of an eye. She glared down at him, her eyes blazing with a mix of anger, revulsion, and pure lust, and Tank knew he had her. <laughs> he battered the, weft of the heft of the weapon aside, caught her arms by the wrists, and held them fast. You are strong, human, but you are no Sephirian. She allowed the Muktatoran to drop to the sand, turned her wrists, and clamped onto his forearms, pushing back with impressive strength. Tank had to exert considerable force just to stay at her, just to hold her at bay as she pressed harder, her long, powerful legs digging into the sand and pushing Tank back a pace. Tank dropped onto his back, pulling her arms and dragging her towards the sandy ground with him. Kicking out with his booted feet, he caught her in the rock-hard stomach and flipped her backwards over his head. Wasting no time, he reoriented himself, straddled her, and caught her hands in his. Wait! She pushed against him now, her tone suddenly frantic. You do not know what you are doing. We must stop. I, I can never. I, I cannot. You do not know what you are doing. You are in great danger. She struggled against him, but slowly he pinned her hands at her sides and lowered himself down to her, bringing his lips close to hers. You, you risk starting the Krakatok Murtak Tar, the Safaran date rate. The Safaran mating ritual! God damn it, I blew that one. Bring it on! He pressed her lips against hers, and lightning struck him. His vision swam as flames of burning desire scorched his body from the core of his being outwards. The burning debris from the ship, the blue sands, and the heat from the two suns faded away. Crack! Talk! But Bora's strength increased suddenly. She pushed him hard with her right arm, rolling over him and climbing on top of him, even as she kissed him back with a hungry ferocity that shocked and excited him. She pressed her warm, sensuous, delicate body against him, delicious body against him, her pert breasts and the jolts of carnal electricity through his torso. He instantly rose to the occasion as she reached for his belt with one hand. Crack talk, Rora talk! Another woman's voice boomed somewhere back in the real world. Barbora was ripped off of Tank, suddenly and unexpectedly. Tank's eyes snapped open as he reached for his blaster, but as his vision adjusted, he stopped. Fourteen women, as tall and gorgeous as Barbora glared and pointed Muktatorans in his direction. Two others held Barbora between them. They dressed in similar garb and were all just as muscular, save for the tallest of them, an older woman, though still attractive, who bore a striking resemblance to Barbora. She held no weapon, but an elaborate headdress in the bovine shape of a cow's face adorned her head. Mother! Barbora struggled against her captors to no avail. Uh-oh, Tank muttered. Welcome to Sapphire, human, for your crimes against our gods and the attempted desecration of my daughter. Prepare to suffer a thousand deaths. Not again, Tank sighed. <laughs>